Hello, my friends. I hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to take a look at PowerPoint and ChatGPT, how to create world-class PowerPoint slide decks in ChatGPT. Now, over the past number of months, I showed you how to do this with plugins. But now, I want you to know that the plugin that I advertise quite a bit to you is now no longer free. It's free up to 10 slides, beyond 10 slides. If you want to get 10 additional presentations, you're going to pay. And I know a lot of folks aren't even happy with GPT-4 being a paid subscription to begin with. So I know lots of you are wondering how to generate PowerPoints. The best way to generate PowerPoints is use the advanced data analysis option in GPT. So click on GPT-4. Let's make it bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. Up here, GPT-4, click on that tab as long as you've subscribed. And then, bottom left, click on the three dots. See those three dots? Click on those. It's going to open the option for settings and beta. Click on that and go to beta features and slide advanced data analysis on. This is a great option that allows you to write code, to analyze files in Excel and other formats. We are going to use this to generate PowerPoints in GPT. When you have selected it, hover over GPT-4 and make sure you select Advanced Beta Analysis Beta. If you only have default selected, you will not be able to use this functionality. So click on Advanced Beta Analysis Beta. The moment you do that, you see a plus. This could be used for data analysis, but that's not what we're doing today. Today, we are going to generate PowerPoints. So I'm going to show you again how to get world-class PowerPoints from GPT. Let's take a topic that project managers understand. We'll take the topic of risk management. So I'll say, create a detailed slide deck of risk management across various industries and how to effectively manage it. Give 12 discrete steps. Hit enter and GPT will do its thing. Right now you can see it's generating the content and showing you slide by slide what will be generated. I've given it a number of slides and GPT is pretty good at sticking to the number of slides that you tell it to generate. So right now it's generating identification, assessment, establishing a risk appetite, all of these steps. And there you have it, 12 discrete steps and 12 slides. And one more for Q&A. To convert the above content into a visually appealing slide deck, consider using tools like PowerPoint. Now you've got to remind GPT that it's got these superpowers. So I'm going to say, generate the slide deck right here. Remember, you can do this now. So it's saying that it's going to be in PDF, but I don't want it to be in PDF. So I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to say, recall, this should be in PPTF. You can do this. Sometimes you've got to remind GPT <laughs> about its superpowers. So I'm glad it's acting up like this because if it did that to you, you'd wonder, hey, that Phil guy, he told me an untruth. <laughs> GPT can't generate PowerPoints, but it can. The way GPT acts is like a forgetful person who needs additional help every now and again. So I've helped GPT. I've told it, hey, Remember, you can actually generate stuff. And when it's done, 
when that spinning wheel stops spinning and it turns from a green to a gray box, you'll know that your PowerPoint is ready. Let's give it a few more moments. It's taking all of that information, compiling it into a deck. Now, the way it does this on the back end, there are libraries that GPT pulls from to be able to create files in these formats CDF, Word, PPTX, and so on. It did behave rather reluctantly at first, but with a little bit of coercion, a little bit of salt in the delicacy, right, for the horse, you get it to move. Let's click on download the PPTX presentation here. That's it. Open the file. Click on open file. And this is it right here. It has generated this slide deck. So even if you don't have smart slides, you can use GPT to generate. And it's going to get better at this. It's not going to need as much coercion or pushing and pulling to remind it that it can generate slides. But anyway, for now, you may need to give it a little kick for it to kick in. Let's go on down to the design option right there and make sure we choose the office theme. Now that we have the office theme selected, we can see that the designer capability has kicked in, which is quite cool. Before we get into designing and making this look all fancy, let's go on down to the slide size, click on that drop down and make it widescreen. These days, people use widescreen. Who uses 4x3 anymore? I certainly don't. Let's click on the designer capabilities and select a nice cover page. Now, before we get carried away with that, let's go into View and Slide Master. In Slide Master, on the very first page, what you probably should do is insert a logo. And to insert a logo, we are going to use shapes. So let's use shapes. Let's click on a bar and just make a solid bar at the bottom to give a corporate feel. And let's make it a dark color so that a logo will stand out. Next, we're going to insert. And this is just for demonstration purposes. Let's click on icons and let's look for some business icons. There's business. I quite like this one, which shows some sort of growth. Let's click on that. Let's insert. And let's make this gray. All right, so we have the beginnings of our logo here. And this is going to be a logo. And we're going to insert the text. And you can just fast forward if you already know how to do this. If you already have a logo, well, you can skip all this and you can just import your logo. But I'm going to use this to say, to, to put in the company name. And I'll just say, even though there is a different logo for this organization, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so that's going to be our logo. And this will show up on every slide now that we've put it in master slides, as you can see. Just nudge it there a little bit. Okay. If you wanted to put a little bit of color in any of these, you always could, but I'll leave it as is for now. Now let's close out of the slide master. And now you can see that every slide has got this. For those folks who are wondering why I left the bar hanging, I just wanted to make sure that everything was as I wanted it. And it does look like I wanted it. And now we have a clean look. At this point, 
we can go on down to the designer. Let's go into normal mode and let's click the designer. And now we can begin putting a little bit more play into this slide deck. So first slide here, I'm going to look for an option that includes my logo. And the same for the second and the third and so on. But let me tell you how to do this really quick. If you come up here and you see perhaps a design that you like, you could still select it and just copy the contents like this. So I select that. It doesn't have the logo. So I'm just going to copy this. This content here, Control C for copy. And then I'm going to undo, or Control Z for undo. Then I'll choose an option that has that logo. I'll delete the contents that are in there and I'll just control V what I like. And it's that simple. So by the time you're done, you could have a number of cool options for your PowerPoint deck without even going outside of PowerPoint. Like if I stuck this one in here, right? Scroll down, it gives me an option to use that photo with my logo still intact. See, same for this. I like this image. I don't see one that has my logo. So I'm just gonna select this, copy the picture and undo and then paste it in and look for an option that includes it along with my logo like this. And just make a small tweak and there you have it. You have a slide deck that keeps your logo where you want it. In the interest of time, I'll just go ahead and select a few options, do some very quick edits, some quick edits, and, and there you, you have so many options. The options are endless. So many options. One of the things that the designer does is it tries to copy previous slide formats. So once you've started going down a particular path, it thinks, oh, that's where I need to go. And it starts giving you similar options like this horizontal layout. You see, because I did this one, then it gives me this as an option. But let's continue. Just keep selecting whatever you like. You can also insert, if you want, pictures from here. So click on Insert, Pictures, Block Images, do a search for Business, select a bunch of these, and it's going to insert all four images. You could choose to use all of them as a montage, or you could just select one out of them all. So I'm going to cut three of them and leave one. I'm going to see what the designer suggests. And you scroll down, you can see it's still got that landscape feel. But I don't want to do a landscape feel, I want something else. So you may need to play with it a little bit to get additional options for whatever you're doing. See that? And I've still got the other pieces that I copied to my clipboard. So I'll just go over here. Leave one, take two away. And try to make the text a little bit bigger if I can. And honestly, my friends, this is how you can create a PowerPoint deck from GPT. It does require a little bit of extra work, yes, but for a tool that created content out of nothing with just simple 
command, you know, create a, a debt reach in risk management, you got to give it to the tool that it's done quite well. I mean, this time last year, you know how you were creating your PowerPoint slides. You had to do everything yourself. But now the tool is making it so easy. As usual, remember smart art can be configured in different ways, different colors. So explore those if your PowerPoint needs it. Let's cut this, leave this. Let's see what the tool suggests. Again, it's gone with that horizontal flare. I like the horizontal one for closing. And question and answers, boom, done. And there you have it. It's not a bad deck. It works for the purpose. I'll just show you over here what exactly we have. So let me maximize it. Let's review it together. You do know that uh, the video element in uh, the designer does eat up a little bit more memory, but um, it does look nice, so it's worth it. All right, let's go ahead and fit this on the screen so that you can see it in its entirety. All right, that's the whole thing. And that's our slide deck. May have to tweak that previous one so the logo fits nicely, but that's how you create PowerPoints in GPT from zero to having a solid, professional, clean looking slide deck. I hope you found this to be helpful, my friends. If you did, Hit the like button, subscribe, share this with your friends. So those folks who are freaking out over smart slides now being paid. Remember, you don't have to use smart slides to get PowerPoint output from GPT. You may need to wrestle with it a little bit. You may need to remind it of what it can do. But once you give it a swift kick, it should be rolling in the right direction. All right, my friends, talk to you soon. All the very best. Bye for now.